mentioned earlier on, uh, over the past years, uh, we see there's increasing uh, trends in the uh, difficult questions for the O-level um, papers, especially for the pure chemistry uh, papers. So I suppose, yeah, everyone, all the students, yeah, the pure chemistry students. Yeah, so it gets harder. So uh, I'd like to share with everyone what are the various uh, techniques and the ways to uh, solve these kind of questions. What are some of the uh, helps they can get to, um, to, to better prepare yourself for this uh, examination? All right. Okay, so, um, so basically the reason for attending this uh, workshop, you can see that um, there's increasing difficulty in the questions asked for the past uh, four to five years. So uh, we need to prepare the students uh, with more uh, higher order thinking questions and uh, may even have to incorporate some of the A-level um, basic concepts to help them in their understanding. All right. Then uh, the objective of the workshop is basically is to increase the awareness uh, of the importance of scoring well in chemistry. As you can see that chemistry is a very compulsory subject because regardless of what combination you take, you need to have this chemistry subject uh, in order to uh, take it into your L1R5 or even your L1R4 uh, consideration. Yeah, so be well prepared for this is important. Okay, now the next slide will show you what are some of the weightages on the uh, various components. It has a five uh, On some of the components for the pure chem and the combined chem. So uh, more concern will be the pure chemistry since uh, all the students here are taking the pure chemistry. You can see that the structure and the free response takes out the highest weightage, which is 50%. The other one will be the MCQ, the multiple choice, yes, 30%. Now for the SPA, SPA is basically the practical examination. So uh, most of the schools, yeah, most of the schools, uh, they will, they will um, spread out their SPA throughout the two years. So some schools, they will start off in the second years to uh, do a few uh, rounds of the practical. Some will cram everything together in the year four, in the second four year. So it depends on school. But um, by the end of uh, June, they should be able to finish all the practical uh, components already. So that consists of about 20%. So later I'll be sharing with you what are some of the um, ways that you can tackle in each of the components so that you can make sure that you'll be able to uh, do well for the chemistry subject. So um, the other one is the combined chemistry. If, you're, if you have any um, child that takes the combined chemistry, you realize that chemistry is also another important subject because be it the physics with chemistry uh, combination or with the chem and bio combination, the chemistry needs to be chosen as one of the subject. Yeah. All right. And the components is quite high. It's about 65% for the structured questions part. All right. So that's the first point. Okay, now, so I'm going to share with you what are the uh, important ways or the techniques in answering the questions um, for the chemistry subject. So since uh, the structured uh, component is the majority, is the, uh, high, has the highest weightage, we shall focus on this first, right? Okay, so um, definitely in answering the structured and the free response question, it's important to highlight the key conceptual words. I think we have been hearing this uh, since the primary school days, even in, uh, in tackling the primary school science, the key conceptual words are important. All right, so the same goes for the O-level uh, part, but uh, when you move on to O-level, just by memorizing the uh, concepts are, uh, is not uh, enough to do well. You also have to uh, make sure that you understand the concept and be able to apply to the questions when they have uh, uh, various kinds of questions. All right, so for example, um, this, first uh, part, when they talk about hydrogen chloride gas. Now, um, some of these slides may be a little technical for the parents, so uh, hopefully the students will be able to absorb from here. Alright, if you need to take down some notes, you can just go ahead. Alright, nevertheless, these uh, slides will be uploaded into the uh, website. Alright, okay, so uh, you can see that when we talk about this hydrogen chloride gas that does not conduct the electricity, and whereas in the aqueous state, why do they conduct electricity? So they wanted to explain what is the reason and what is the difference for this. Now keywords such as this, like if you were to talk about the hydrogen chloride dissociates in water, the dissociation uh, is the key conceptual words that needs to be uh, explained in this answer. And it's because of the dissociation of the reaction, that's why it causes ions to be formed. And due to the formation of the ions, these ions will then allow the uh, solution of the hydrogen chloride to conduct electricity. So if you were to, if the students were to miss out any of the keywords, uh, 
you find that there's no um, uh, proper way of answering to the question. And then uh, this keywords will bring up the understandings of the students as well. So it's important to highlight this. And because of the ions, the mobile, they are mobile to conduct electricity. So that's another uh, third point that need to be highlighted as well. So all those uh, keywords are what I've highlighted in red. And in the answers, knowing this uh, as an <coughs> Bring up these key points will have to uh, is crucial or is essential for the uh, in order to gain the, the five marks. So you can see that each of these uh, point takes up one mark. Now in the marking scheme of the O level, they, the examiner actually go by according to the points. So if you have the uh, key points, that is considered as one key point and one mark as well. So sometimes it's, as a being a student, it's also important to know uh, what are the marks allocation for each question. Okay. Then uh, since this is a, a, a comparison question, you also have to end off in saying that uh, what happened to the hydrogen chloride? Why is it not able to conduct electricity when it's in the gaseous state? So the second point is where you talk about this um, uh, hydrogen chloride gas, which is a covalent molecule, and hence they do not have mobile ions to conduct electricity. So, it's a five marks question. You need to know what are the important uh, key points. Yeah. So I uh, understand. Yeah, sorry. If, if, for example, if the student answer mm. the second portion wrong, yeah. the H plus ion, they write something else, mm -hmm. but the rest is uh, exactly the same. Correct. Do they get four marks? Or do they get penalized for <laughs> Okay, now, because in the marking schema, we have to understand that the logic of the answers have to be there as well. If, let's say, the student were to miss out the uh, points on H plus ions or CL minus ions, in fact, the whole answers will be pointed already. Yeah, because that is the main key point. So without the ions, they can't even conduct electricity. Yeah, so... Um, so in fact, uh, when we, being a student, when you do your TYS, uh, just by memorizing the answers wouldn't help much. You have to understand first and also remember the key points, then you will know uh, what are the keywords to be put in as the answer relevantly. <laughs> yeah. so, so in fact, in the lesson and also um, being teachers or tutors, uh, we have to keep highlighting to the students. You know, during our time in our uh, uh, being a student, teacher always ask us to memorize, memorize the uh, reasons, the paragraph from the notes. But nowadays, we realize that you can't just do pure regurgitation anymore. Yeah, you have to even use a, a as a rephrase your answers and put in the uh, correct key conceptual. No, would it be? Smarter if you can't remember the H plus <laughs> ion, you just put form ions which are mobile to conduct. Would you get ah. more than that? <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> Why? Because, uh, strictly speaking, uh, just for this particular compound, uh, HCl, um, it conducts electricity is also because of the specific ions which are the H plus and the Cl minus ions. It doesn't form any other types of ions at all. So if the answers are too general, um, it makes the examiner a little doubtful whether this is correct or not. So sometimes um, they wouldn't give the marks at all. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's why the full answers, the precise answers have to be given. <laughs> we'll share a little more. There are also a lot of uh, other uh, uh, slides to, uh, to, to, to share with the students here and parents. Okay? Alright, so the next structured questions you can see this comes under the year 2008, alright, the O level um, paper. So uh, it's a redox reaction question. So I think uh, Kester, uh, Sherilyn, Ika, you know what are the uh, redox reaction all about. Uh? Alright? Now, in the redox reaction, it's a, it's a very easy chapter to understand. But the the, the difficulty here is that the students always miss out a lot of the uh, points. They find it's very hard to phrase the answers in words. So in fact, there's a standard way of presenting the answers. <coughs> like for instance, in uh, this part 3, uh, why is this a redox reaction? Now, a redox reaction in simple term is referring to a reduction and oxidation process. Okay, let me show the answer first. 
Okay, now basically, it is a redox reaction because palladium, palladium is the compound that's is denoted by PD, huh? alright? In the palladium, 2 chloride has been reduced. So, most of the students, they will just give the answer and stop here. They never further explain what uh, is reduction. How has it been reduced? So, in fact, the second part, uh, which is the reasoning due to a decrease in its oxidation number from plus 2 to plus 4, this is the important point that needs to be highlighted. It's not just good enough to highlight the element that has been reduced. You have to further explain um, what is the change in the oxidation number. So this is considered to be a full answer. Yeah. So um, when we do the marking of the of these uh, questions in this chapter, a lot of the time the students actually just gave part of the answer. They say that this, they can identify the element that has been reduced. But they never say that uh, what has been or uh, what is the change? What is the change in the number? Yeah, so that wouldn't allow them to, to, to gain the full marks. Now. Yeah. So the same goes for the second part. Besides highlighting the uh, element that has been oxidized, you also have to highlight what has it been changed from, what is the number has been changed from. Yeah, so these are all uh, key conceptual answers, the keywords that needs to be given. Um, I would say that in the start, when the students are at the, the secondary level, definitely they are not uh, familiar with all these key points. But all these skills have to be uh, built up as we move along. Yeah, so these are the important points. So we need the uh, teachers, we also need to have the uh, tutors to highlight, keep highlighting to the students on all these uh, important points. So it's also important to, um, to, that the teacher is aware of the marking scheme then they will know what is the correct uh, areas to target to uh, and help the students in this. Yeah. So obviously the question yes. two that was asking, uh -huh. they are supposed to be the... the